Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in, coming back, hanging out, watching my videos, all that stuff. I appreciate it. Hope you're doing really well today. I'm in Luminar 4 and this deep dive video is about advanced contrast. Super powerful, super fun, super awesome filter. I love it and I've used it quite a bit. Um, I talked about it in my top 10 tools video, which I'll link to right there. And in this video, I'm going to dive deep, show you a little bit more about it, how I use it, talk about how it works and give you a demonstration as well. So let's hit it. Um, I've got this shot, which is like a twilight, kind of just post sunset uh, from the lovely city of Boston. And I'm over here on the pro tab. I've done nothing else to the photo except straighten a little bit. My photos are always crooked. Uh, advanced contrast is right here at the top. So I'm just going to pop into that. Um, there's um, three different sections, right? The highlights and midtones and the contrast. And that's what makes it advanced and frankly more powerful than like say smart contrast, which is on the essentials tab in the light filter. And that is it allows you to isolate contrast in each of these uh, or those three tonal areas, right? Highlights, midtones, and shadows. So it gives you better control over overall contrast in the image. And frankly, it just has a broader, more powerful impact on the photo. So let me show you how I use it. Um, now, I, I, what I generally do is just start at the top. I'll start with highlights, then I'll go to midtones, then I'll go to shadows, and then I'll come back and mess with the balance. And I'll talk about the balance in a minute. But isolating these specific areas just gives you a lot of power and control over uh, contrast, which is you know impacting your light. So let me show you how I would use it in this photo. The reason I say that is because every photo is different. So there's not like always do this or always do that. I experiment. And like I said in previous videos, like in everything in Luminar and in photography in general, it just kind of depends, right? So experiment, find what works for you, but don't hesitate to use the tool. So highlights contrast. Highlights is pretty much the sky in this case, right? So I'm looking at the sky and I'm just gonna drag the contrast slider to the right and see what happens. And you can see that the sky is basically getting a little bit darker. It's getting more contrasty. So let me show you the before. There it is, brighter sky and after, a little bit darker sky. In fact, I might even go further. I might just go all the way to 100. Let me show you that before and after. There's before and there's after. I think that sky looks great now. That's effectively act, it acted a little bit like a polarizing filter. So um, I'm pretty happy with that. And this is what I do. I'll just start in the highlights and then I'll go to midtones and then I'll go to shadows. So next I'm gonna go to midtones and again, experiment. So I just start dragging this slider across just to see what's happening. And you know, it's not having a huge impact on the photo. So usually when that's the case, I'll just kind of drag it further. And sure, has it impacted the photo? Yes, is it massive? I don't think it's been as impactful as let's say the highlights was. So you can kind of see that when I do that uh, back and forth, you can kind of see what it's doing. It seems to be darkening the water a little bit. Uh, so that's obviously showing up as a mid-tone. So I might would go, you know, let's say 30 or something here. Uh, that's 26, let me just drag a little bit more. So, you know, something like that. And I think that looks pretty good. That's kind of a balanced looking image so far in my opinion. And then of course you have shadows. And so again, I just kind of go through them in order. So with shadows, I would just start experimenting and it, you'll see what's happening here. The shadows are kind of darker. So when you're adding contrast, you're kind of lightening the shadows. So you may not want to go to hundred unless you really want that brighter foreground here because the buildings and kind of the walkway over here, they're a little bit darker. And if you go that far, I really think what you're doing is you're kind of giving up some contrast. So you just want to be a little bit careful. Um, on my final image, I actually ended up at about a 63. Let me show you where I was beforehand. So here's the before, and there's the current state. Actually, what I've done is I basically balanced out the light. It's a lot more evenly dis uh, distributed, the light is. So once more, uh, there's brighter sky, a little bit darker in the buildings and some of the foreground, including that path over there on the left, and now a bit brighter overall. So I'm, I'm looking, you know, I'm looking at the photo and thinking, I like it. And this is when I generally will go experiment with balance. Okay, so balance is basically about defining the midpoint for each zone. So honestly, again, there's no specific way to do this other than to experiment. And so what I do with highlights balance uh, and, and each of the other ones in turn is just go through. I generally will work through the contrast sliders for each zone and then come back to balance and say, okay, do I like it or not? And start experimenting sliding. So highlights balance, I go that way. I'm getting brighter, almost a blown out sky. I don't like that at all. I'm gonna go this way and my final image actually ended up at 100 here in highlights balance. And I like what it did to the sky. I mean, if you compare it where highlights was uh, balance was at zero, I've now uh, shown you that. And if I go to this, I like that sky. It's, it's looking a lot darker, um, which I think looks nice because it's bringing up some of that color. 
mid-tones, same thing. I would just start experimenting. Generally, I'll just slide it to the right. Um, I feel like that's getting flat, so what I ended up doing is going about a negative 80 in my final image, which I think looks pretty fine. Let me show you the before. There it is, and the mid-tones at negative 80. Uh, there we go. I just, I, I like that. Um, before I started playing with the balance, actually, let me show you this. I feel like I'm, I'm losing contrast a little bit. The image is even distributional light, which is kind of nice. But keep in mind, an even distributional light often means you don't have a lot of contrast because contrast is the difference between the brighter and the darker areas. So I feel like images look best if they have a little bit of contrast. So even though I like to balance out the light, that's kind of my step one in the photo is get the light kind of even, and then I start kind of messing with the contrast. So um, in other words, I don't always go and use advanced contrast as the first filter. I might do other things first. Again, experiment. In this case, it's actually working fairly well using it as the first filter. And actually, I'm using it as the only filter in this, this demo, and I think it looks fine. Um, so now I'm going to go on to shadows balance and mess with that. And here what I do is I just kind of drag it. Again, you know, no science to this. I go left. I feel like it's kind of getting flat. I go right, and, you know, if you go too far right, obviously it's going to be really dark. So I was at zero. I think I would go maybe like 10 or 15, something about like that. That's, you know, getting a little bit more contrast. Those dark areas, like this post and this chain and that sort of thing. Let me show you the before. They're a little bit brighter, a little bit washed out, so you don't have as much contrast, right? So um, as I drag it to the right, I think, you know, maybe at about 12 or so, I think it looks pretty good. And that's that's actually it. I mean, there you go. There's before. Brighter sky, a little bit darker foreground. Typical thing that happens when you're shooting landscapes and cityscapes. The sky, of course, uh, unless it's a dark night shot or something, the sky, of course, is going to be brighter because that's where the light is and the foreground is going to be darker. But I feel like I've done a really good job of balancing that out just using advanced contrast. Now, having said that, I might go back over here and say, hey, you know what I want to do? Maybe I want to change the temperature a little bit and bring that a little bit cooler. Maybe bring the tint a little bit. Maybe I want a little smart contrast, which is kind of global in nature, but, you know, intelligent. Maybe a little AI enhance just to boost that a little bit. So I might come in and do a couple of things like that to give it a little extra kick. But the majority of what I did was based on that advanced contrast. So let me go over here. I'll leave those other two sliders on. I'll turn this off. And the photo doesn't look anywhere near as good, I think, with just those two sliders from the first tab, Essentials. But adding the advanced contrast really made it pop. And so advanced contrast works incredibly well on some images by itself. I think it did a pretty good job here. I, I don't know that I'd call it a complete edit, but I think it did a fine job. But going back and adding those two other filters with just some minor adjustments really, I think, brought it all together. Now, you know, I might would uh, work on some of the colors a little bit. This pink's a little bit off. It's, it's not perfect. I'm not telling you that I'm completely done. But I wanted to demonstrate the power of advanced contrast one more time. There it is. Without advanced contrast, having just used those two uh, tools on the first tab, and here it is adding those two tools plus advanced, con uh, advanced contrast, which I think it looks pretty good. And overall, there's the before. No edits whatsoever. And after, I think I've got a pretty nice looking photo. So that's advanced contrast, powerful, easy to use, really just something that you can experiment with, play around, just jack around, see what happens, move the sliders. As I said, I like to do contrast first in each of the three zones and then come back and play with balance, but this is how I do it. That doesn't mean, it, you know, that's not a law, that's not a rule. Do whatever works for you. Just experiment with it, try it out. It's a great, great tool to have and another great reason to love uh, Luminar 4. So. That's that, my friends. Uh, by all means, let me know what you think. Give the video a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. Let YouTube know that you liked it. If you haven't yet subscribed, please do and leave a comment and let me know what you thought about this one. I got more deep dives, more workflows, uh, more videos about uh, various things coming. So don't hesitate to leave a comment as well about uh, things you might like me to address, and I'll try to get to it. Thanks for watching, my friends. Have a great day. Take care, and adios.